Okay, so we're gonna try this again. I made a tutorial earlier about how to edit your Pocket 4K videos in Adobe Premiere, but a YouTuber actually, Michael Fouché, commented on the video saying, hey, you can actually change the ISO and the white balance in Adobe Premiere as well, similar to DaVinci Resolve, kinda. So that's what I'm gonna add to this tutorial because it's a great idea. See, I don't really use Adobe Premiere because DaVinci Resolve is cheaper, but a lot of people were asking me to see how they can edit the 4K footage that I've been giving them in Adobe Premiere. So here it is. Uh, thank you again, Michael, for bringing that up. So let's go ahead and dig into it. So the first thing you need to worry about is make sure you have the latest and greatest version of Adobe Premiere CC, because if not, the Pocket 4K files, you're not gonna be able to import. So we are here right now. We're gonna go to Pocket versus uh, XD3. We have some Pocket 4K files here. Minimize this. I'm gonna wait for the thumbnail. We're just gonna grab one. We're gonna drag and drop that into our timeline. And then we're gonna go to Project. We're gonna right click on the file. He said, disable master clips, and then go to source setting, and voila, there you go. You can now change the white balance, the tint, and the exposure. S kind of similarly on how you would do it in DaVinci Resolve under the camera raw setting. See, I can go Cinema DNG, right? But if I go to clip, I can edit all of these options because I'm shooting raw with the Pocket 4K. And that's probably one of the best advantages of shooting RAW because you can do all of these changes after the fact. So in, the, in Adobe Premiere, you don't get all of those options, but you get some. And this is what he pointed out to me because my original video did not include this part. Well, here it is. You can change temperature, press OK. And that's gonna change it in your viewer. Obviously, this is not, not the right temp for it, but I'm just showing you the example. Okay, and additionally, you can actually go, so go to this, you can actually go to the effects control of the actual clip. So if you go here, you're gonna see that you can change it here as well. Should be able to turn it on. There you go. All right, same thing. And the exposure value is like similar to dropping your ISO in the Vinge Resolve here. See, I can drop ISO, increase ISO, similar to that. So you can see, oh, Jesus. So just play around with the values here. All right, so we're gonna leave that as zero. So you can change that there, that's cool. I'm gonna turn it off. And now I'm gonna continue with the tutorial I had originally, which is how to load up the Blackmagic LUT in Adobe Premiere. I do have this LUT pack included in the comments below that you, so you can download and follow along. So go ahead and download the Blackmagic Design 4K LUTs. So we're gonna go to color, highlight the clip, we're gonna turn on Lumetri, we're gonna turn on, oh, I usually like to see the, not the histogram, like to see the parade, RGB, and vector scope. This is just good practice, really. All right, so following on with the tutorial, what to do next? And granted, this is not gonna be a color correction, color grading tutorial. If you guys are interested in that, I'll do that later. But this is just a basic how to load the LUT in Adobe Premiere. We're gonna go to creative, browse. We're gonna go to the desktop where I have it set. Extended video is what I'm gonna use because People were right, it's so much better than the regular video Rec. 709 for the Pocket 4K. It's truly amazing. And as you can see, it's a little bit overexposed. Now, I added a LUT in the Creative tab because Adobe Premiere doesn't use a node-based system color correction, not like DaVinci Resolve. So I'll show you DaVinci real quick. You see there's nodes, I can add a million nodes and have different effects for each and one of them. In Premiere, you kind of stuck into one, right? So by adding the LUT in the creative slot, in a way I'm kind of cheating it, making it seem like I'm adding the LUT in a second node. Because now if I go to basic correction, I can actually change the exposure. And as you can see that the 
the waveform here really rolls off. It's just nice and, you know, it gets darker and brighter all together, right? And I'm gonna show you the difference. So now you see it's nice, right? Exposure, like you're riding the ISO up and down. We're gonna reset this. Now I'm gonna put the actual LUT and the basic correction, same LUT, and watch what happens. Now you see it. Now I'm gonna change the exposure. You see that? So this is similarly to how you would log grade in, in DaVinci Resolve. You're only affecting the, you know, the top and bottom. You see that this is rising. This is getting brighter and getting lower. That's kind of similar to how you would log grade in DaVinci. Now I'm not a colorist, I'm just a YouTuber, right? So I'm not really familiar with all the science that goes behind this. But for me, it makes more sense to put the LUT in the creative, browse it, and then do my corrections here. It just, the, the settings just reacts so much better than having the LUT in the basic correction. All right, now, like I said earlier, if this is just a quick tutorial, I hope you guys learned something new, and I am also learning like you guys, and I actually learn a lot from people's comments, and I do read them and try to reply to them. Uh, thanks again to Michael for pointing out that you can change the ISO, technically the exposure and white balance in Adobe Premiere, and for you guys who didn't know, hopefully now you know.